What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you about dilations, all right? Now, a dilation is just when you make a shape bigger or smaller. Still stays the exact same shape, you're just either increasing the size of it, also known as an enlargement, or you're shrinking it, you're making it smaller, also known as a reduction, okay? So there's two really important things that you need to understand when we're talking about dilations. One of them is the center of dilation, all right? And it's normally denoted by the letter C. And this point is really important because it's where you start measuring everything from, okay? Now, the position of your center of dilation is really important too because, for example, if I change the position, so right now it's at the very center, right? It's actually at the origin at zero comma zero. But if I moved it, just for example, to like right there, it would completely change what my dilation would look like or the copied image, okay? Or sometimes you'll see this uh, center of dilation or this dilation point on the outside somewhere, right? So it won't even be inside your shape anywhere. It'll just be floating on the outside somewhere. And again, that's going to change how you draw your dilation, right? So where this point is really, really important. And the other thing that is really, really important is the scale factor, okay? And that's denoted by the letter K. And the scale factor is just a number that tells you how much you're going to increase or decrease the size of your shape. Right? And whenever k is equal to 1, your shape doesn't change. Right? It's, it just stays exactly the same. Right? But if k, for example, was equal to 2, well then your shape would double in size. If k was equal to 3, well then your shape would triple in size. Okay? If k was equal to 1 half, well then your shape would be cut down or shrink by 1 half. Okay, or by 50% or however you, you want to think about it. Okay, now a couple of things about K. K can't be equal to zero because if it was ever equal to zero, you would have no shape. Okay, this thing would just disappear. And also K usually isn't negative. So in general, when K is between zero and one, okay, so when it's less than one, but it's more than zero, the shape shrinks. But if k is greater than 1, then your shape gets bigger. This is kind of the general rule that you'll see most places. Okay, so there's a little bit more to the scale factor that I want to cover, but that's kind of the gist of it. That's definitely enough to kind of get us started on an example, all right? So uh, let's say we uh, started with this rectangle right here, right? Rectangle F-A-R-T. Now, let's apply a scale factor of 2. Okay, so again, that means I want to double the size of my rectangle over here, right? So how do we do that? Well, there's basically two methods. So the first method you can use is by just counting squares, okay? So if we want to double the size of this uh, big rectangle, we just have to figure out how far the center of dilation over here, right, point C, is to each of the points on our rectangle, okay? So how far is it from C to F? then from C to A, C to R, and from C to T, okay? So first of all, how far is C to F? Well, if you just counted spaces, we could go over three and up two, right? We would go over three and then up two. So if we wanna double that, right? Because we're applying the scale factor of two, right? So we wanna double it, we would just double these lengths, okay? So instead we would go over six and up four, okay? So instead of going just over three, we would go over six, and then instead of just going up two, we would go up four. Okay, so then this point right here would be F prime. And then we could do the same thing with the rest, right? So from C to A, same thing. Right now we have to go over three and then up two. So to double that, we would go over six and then up four, right? So then this point would be A prime. And then I think you kind of see the pattern, right? So from C to R, same thing, over three, down two. So then we'd go over six, down four. And then from C to T, same thing, go over six and then down four, okay? So then this is T prime and, sorry, this is R prime. And now as you can see, we have the four corners of our rectangle, so we could just play, connect the dots. So now this copied rectangle, also known as the image, is twice as big as this original rectangle, right? Also known as the pre-image. Now, that is the first method, just kind of counting squares. And now the second method that we can use is you can basically just list out the coordinates 
of your uh, original shape right here. Okay, so I have the coordinates right here. So F right now is at negative 3, 2, right? Negative 3, 2, F. Uh, a is at 3, 2, right? 3, 2. So, and then R and T are right there, okay? So all you have to do is take your scale factor. So remember, our scale factor over here was 2, right? So let's just write it over here. K is equal to 2, okay? So what you can do is just multiply all your coordinates over here by your scale factor, which is a 2, right? So we'd multiply this number by 2, this number by 2. We'd multiply these by 2, multiply those by 2, and T, we'd multiply those by 2, right? So then here, uh, that means F prime would be at negative 3 times 2 is equal to negative 6, right? And 2 times 2 is equal to 4. Okay, so f prime should be at negative 6, comma 4. So right now you can see that f prime over here is in fact at negative 6, comma 4. So then we land at that spot right there, right? Same thing with a. So if we multiply these by 2, 3 times 2 is equal to, again, this is a prime, 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and 2 times 2 is equal to 4, right? So then a prime should be at 6, comma 4, 6, comma 4, and it is, right? Same thing with r and t. Okay, so multiplying all your coordinates by the scale factor is pretty convenient, right? But it's really, really, really important to understand that you can only use this method when your center of dilation is at the very center, at the origin, right? At zero comma zero, okay? You can see that right now, our center of dilation is in fact at zero comma zero, right? But if I moved this center of dilation anywhere else on the graph, right, if I moved it there, then this method no longer works and you'd have to use the first method of just counting the squares, okay? So if I move the center of dilation anywhere else on the graph, you can't use this second method, okay? But if your center of dilation is right here at the center, at the very center, at the origin, then you can totally use this method, okay? So let's try an example like that. So let's take this center of dilation and we'll put it over here. And we'll clean this up. So that's R. And now our center, or simply just dilation point, is right here. Okay. So now if I want to, again, let's just apply the scale factor of 2. Okay. So again, I want to double this shape, right? My original shape, the F A R T in red. But now I have to start from this point out here, right? So again, just starting with F. What's the distance from C to F? How do you get from C to F? Well, we can go over 1. And then we'd have to go up three, four, five spaces, okay? So we'd go over one and then up five. So that means we have to double that, right? So instead of going over one and up five, we'd go over two and up 10, right? So we'd go over two and up 10. So that's three, and then three plus seven is 10. So seven's right there. Okay, so then this is now F prime, okay? Now from C to A over here, how far is that? It's a lot farther. So from C to A, let's see, this is four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna go right now, we just went over seven and then we're gonna go up three, four, five. Okay, so if we wanna double that, again, we'd have to go over 14 and then up 10. Okay, so here go over 14, so there's four and then plus another 10. Uh, it's actually right here. So that's 14 spaces basically right there and then up 10, right? So again, up three and then plus another seven is 10 right there. Okay, so then this point right here is a prime, right? Now, how far is it from C to R? Well, it's one diagonal space. So if we double that, we'd have two diagonal spaces, right? So then R prime would be right there. Okay, now lastly, uh, T, right? How far is it from C to T? Well, right now it's four, five, six, seven, and then up one. So over seven, up one. So if we double that, be over 14 and then up two, right? So then over 14 again would be right there and then up two would be right there. So this spot right there is T prime. Okay, so we have our four corners, right? F, A, R, and T. So now we can play, connect the dots. There we go, okay. So as you can see, this triangle, the yellow triangle, is in a completely different position than the blue one, right? They're actually the exact same size, which makes sense because they should both be exactly twice as big as the red one, which they are. But depending on where your center of dilation this thing is, it completely changes where you draw it.
All right, now the last thing I wanna talk about is the scale factor. So sometimes you're not gonna be given the scale factor. Instead, it's gonna be your job to find it, okay? So here it says in exercises three through six, find the scale factor of the dilation. Then tell whether the dilation is a reduction or an enlargement, okay? So we're gonna do two of those examples, three and six, all right? So first of all, you can see uh, on number three over here, we have two shapes, right? So we have two triangles, a blue one and a red one. This one is labeled as P and this one is labeled as P prime. Okay, so which one is the original and which one is the copy? Well, P over here would be the original and P prime would be the copy, right? And you can always tell because the copies always have this prime symbol on them, okay? And it also gives us two lengths. So we have the distance from the center of dilation to P prime, so that's six units. And we also have the distance from the center of dilation to P, which is 14 units, right? So if you're trying to figure out the scale factor over here, it's actually not too difficult. So all you need to remember is that the scale factor K is equal to the new length over or divided by the original length. Okay, so just remember new over original, right? So in this case, what is the new length? Well, that would be the distance from C to P prime, which would be equal to six. Okay, and what was the original length? Well, the distance from C to just P, right? The original shape is 14, right? So then your scale factor over here is equal to six over 14. And we can reduce that, right? We can reduce that down to uh, three sevenths, okay? So here K is equal to three sevenths. Okay, and is this a reduction or an enlargement? Well, it would be a reduction, right? Because this number, three sevenths, is between zero and one. And the other way you can tell is by just basically looking at the picture, right? So we have this original shape, the big blue triangle, and then we reduced it down to three sevenths of its original size, down to this little red triangle right there. All right, so not too bad, right? So let's just try one more. So again, we're trying to figure out what the scale factor is, right? So the scale factor, again, is the new length over the original length, right? So in this case, what is the new length? Well, it would, again, would be the distance from the center of dilation to your new spot. So uh, that would be out over here, right? Because P prime is in red, right? So that'd be the distance from C over here to P prime. And it looks like that distance is 28, right? So the new distance is 28. And then the original distance is right here from the center of dilation to P, which is right there, right? So this distance right here is eight. Okay, and then we can reduce this, right? The top and bottom are both divisible by four. So that reduces down to seven over two, okay? And we can rewrite this as three and a half, or we could write it as 3.5, okay? Either way, same thing. These are just different ways that you're probably gonna see these scale factors. But in either case, uh, let's just use 3.5, okay? So 3.5 is bigger than one, right? So that means that this is an enlargement, right? And again, you can tell just by looking at the picture, right? Because here's our original shape, the blue square. And then we made it three and a half times bigger, which is the size of this red square. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.